and it was like after that coach asked me to be on that travel team and you're like you know you you got to pick now you know basketball season's over you're getting into softball like you got to pick and I'm like holding the basketball and I was like I'm gonna play softball and then you're like okay and but now that I think about it because you were a basketball coach for 30 years and you just love basketball yeah. right Hey everyone, this is Rusty Ham, co-host of Catching You. And in today's episode, we're transitioning from the rec ball into uh, travel ball. Now, uh, some of you that are in the softball world, some of you, uh, you transition and travel ball at different times in your career. And, and that happens for various reasons, right? We had our reasons and we go over that in this episode. Surprising to me, my daughter Lacey asked what my, why, why we chose travel ball or why we direct her in that, in that way. So, uh, it was a surprise that she was asking me questions. So you will enjoy her, uh, asking me the questions and getting uh, a parent's side of the view as far as, uh, travel ball and, um, why we why we did that right so those of you that have that entered into travel ball at nine years old and you'll have a big smile on your face because you'll understand it going from rec ball which is probably you know in, in your local uh, your local softball fields to travel ball which is now you're traveling <laughs> you are you are you know we we were for practices in her first year it was fairly local it was about 15 minutes away but for her workouts she had to you know for the organization all the girls had to work out uh, and you know and we had to pay money <laughs> monthly to uh, pay for these guys to work these girls out and then we also started doing pitching lessons uh, about an hour away so you know you know at least two in her first year the first two years was you know, we're traveling an hour to, you know, to go to workouts and do uh, pitching lessons. It's in the second, it's in 10 years when we, we were full bore, you know, four or five days a week <laughs> going to Orange County. If you guys know about so Southern California. So we were about an hour away from Orange County, but I hope you enjoy this episode. Lacey certainly turned the tables and started asking me questions. And it made me think about my experience as a parent and why we did certain things. So enjoy this episode, and I'll catch you on this side, other side. Take care. Hello, and welcome to Catching You, a dad and daughter's softball journey. I'm Rusty, a dad who's been in the dugout and on the sidelines. And I'm Lacey, the daughter whose journey through softball has been filled with incredible wins, tough losses, and so many lessons both on and off the field. For the past 16 years, we've navigated the highs and lows of softball together, from the local fields to national tournaments and everything in between. From the challenges of recruitment during COVID to the mental and emotional roller coaster that comes with being a student athlete, we'll be sharing the perspectives of both a parent and athlete and firsthand experience of the impact of sports on mental health and the importance of support from the sidelines. We're diving into the very beginning of our journey by sharing Lacey's childhood stories and what the start of our learning process as a father-daughter team looked like. Whether you're a young athlete dreaming of playing softball, a parent trying to support your child in sports, or just someone who loves a sports story, we believe you'll find something relatable and inspiring in our podcast. So, how do you know if you've given enough to your sport or to your child's passion? Stick around as we explore these questions and more. You might just find out the answers in our journey. Welcome back, everybody. Lacey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Are you still sore from last week? No, my my mind is sore. I'm having to study for finals next week. Oh no, really? Yeah, guess who I... does not? Guess who does not have to study for tests? Well, that's great for you. It's because I'm really old. <laughs> And wise, old and, and wise, old and wise. That's right. Uh, anyway, um, welcome back, everybody. This is episode three. Um, uh, today we're going to uh, we're transitioning from rec ball, right, to mm -hmm. travel ball. Now, not everyone's experience. Uh, those, those of you that are listening to this, um, who may be starting out in softball, or maybe you've gone through travel ball or you know college. 
um, you know, everyone's situation is different, right? So we chose to go into travel ball at nine years old. Nine years old, like right after the AU All Star team. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so we, uh, and that was a particular choice we made, and there's a specific reason why, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. But, um, Lace, what, just top of your head, what your first ex, your first thoughts of travel ball? Like, what were your first thoughts? My first thoughts of travel ball. I mean, it it was definitely a not just a physical shift, mm-hmm. but mental shift. Because now well, it's just it's just not fun and games anymore. It's like let's win, and we have a goal in mind: go to the national championship and win. Right. And I'm nine years old, so <laughs> it's uh, hard to process. But I think um, since we had such a good relationship with Coach Chris coming from All Stars, we kind of were all on the same page. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but I. I was going to ask, um, like, what was the conversation like with Coach Chris, like, as a parent? Yeah, great question, right? Because we have to make that decision because travel ball is not cheap. No. <laughs> no. Right? no. Um, and it, it is time consuming. Well, we, we find out later it's very time consuming. But um, we were thrilled, right? Um, mm. You know, Coach Chris, who uh, coached travel ball up in Oregon. And was very successful up there. And then he moved down here to Southern California. Um, and he did the, you know, the rec ball circuit with his daughter, Bella. He coached the all-star team. And then he's like, screw this, screw this rec ball stuff. I'm, I'm going back into travel ball. So, um, when he asked us to join the team, we were like, heck yeah. Like, and then when he said, Oh, I'm asking, you know, so and so, so and so and so and so to join us. And I think your eyes lit up too. You're like, oh, I get to play with those girls again, right? I always love playing with my friends. I mean, I'm still young. So that was like, it's a very crucial social point of a kid's life. Right. So, I mean, all they want to do is play with their friends. Yeah. So it was, it was, as a father, I was like, you know, wow, you know, this, this could go somewhere, right? Because you were. You just got done playing with Cotton Candy Crushers. I said it right this time. Good, good. <laughs> Mom keeps me <laughs> making fun <laughs> of me. Um, and you know you're successful. Then you got you know you did again. We played All Stars. We lost three games. You were the number one pitcher at the time, doing well. Um, and and we felt at the time it's like okay, let's let's see where this goes. Let's let's try it out. And uh, another um, reason why we chose to to go this way is because of the organization, right? It was uh, Team Mizuna just branched off from Batbusters. So the the head of Team Mizuna was, you know, he's, uh, you know, I would I guess you can call him a legend, but he, you know, he's very successful as a travel ball coach. Um, there's very, a lot of girls within that organization that are really good. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and we, you can touch about that a little bit, but we just want to kind of see, Hey, let's, let's try it out. Let's see if this is something that, Right. Um, you know, and you didn't just play softball, right? So yeah. what what were the other things that we kind of had you into as well? So I think you guys as parents thought it was important that I explore all my options. So we had soccer, just running back and forth, scoring goals with just little, little, little kids just running back and forth. Um, I have a I great played. story about that if you want to, if you want me to tell you, but, but go ahead. Um. I played water polo. Yeah. Hated water polo. <laughs> you did? I couldn't tread water to save my life. Right. Um, I mean, I was a decent swimmer, but I couldn't tread water and throw a ball at the same time. Right. Um, and then there was basketball, mm-hmm. which I think I enjoyed basketball a lot more um, than like any other things that I played. Yeah. Um, I did play flag football, but that was later. Right. Um, and that was just mostly for fun, but basketball was definitely a really fun yeah. other so, option. Yeah. So okay, a couple of stories. So the, the basketball one is, is important because, um, I was a basketball coach for 30 years. I was actually the head basketball coach of the high school that you went to eventually. Um, 
And there was a parent that was in the basketball community um, asked you to play in a travel basketball, right? After All-Stars, right? I think you played mm-hmm. All-Stars and he asked you to be on the, the travel uh, All-Star uh, travel travel basketball team. Mm-hmm. And then this, so we're, this is the same time. We're like, okay, do we do travel softball or do you travel basketball? And in my head, I'm like, well, basketball, because, you know, your mom's 5'10", I'm, you know, six feet. Yeah. You know, you, you, you were, I think, pretty tall at the time. And I'm like, well, that could be. For, you know, for 10 years cool. old, I was, I was a tall one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, that's pretty cool. Um, but we just, I, I, you were, I think you were better at softball. Um, and I think you were leaning towards that way anyway. But this is the soccer story. I got to get back to the soccer story because it's funny. <laughs> I, don't, because I don't remember it, it, any soccer days. Right. But it, it goes to your competitiveness, right? Because you're probably, if not as competitive as mom. Yeah. Um, and uh, so there was one, there was one Saturday you, again, this is when you're super young, there's no goalies, right? Yeah. And you scored like, I think seven or eight goals. <laughs> you were just like kicking, like, kicking butt. You're just going up and down. This is when you had the, the blue uniform on. It was yeah. one of the cutest soccer pictures I've ever seen. But, and then the next Saturday you scored to zero and right. you, and grandma was there. And you were bawling your head off. <laughs> you were so upset that you didn't score a goal. <laughs> and grandma was sitting there like, it's okay, sweetie. You know? But but that just kind of shows like you're competitive, right? That's yeah. kind of when we knew it's like, okay, this girl's serious about winning. Right. right? But like, I, I specifically remember, I think my last ever basketball game that I played. And it was when we had to make a decision between travel basketball and travel softball. Mm. And we were walking back to the car and it was, and it was like, after that coach asked me to be on that travel team and you're like, you know, you, you got to pick now, you know, basketball season's over. You're getting into softball. Like you got to pick. And I'm like holding the basketball and I was like, I'm going to play softball. And then you're like, okay. Yeah. And, but now that I think about it, because you were a basketball coach for 30 years and you just love basketball, yeah. right? Still do? No? I, I, <laughs> I love, I love the X's and O's. I, um, and we're going to get into it next episode, actually. Um, but it was a, just a year after <laughs> that, mm-hmm. uh, I, did, I fell out of love of coaching right. for other reasons, not the X's and O's. X and O's, I love doing. Um, I still love coaching, right? So I coach real estate investors now. So I love the the aspect of coaching. I don't like some of the other things that come along with it. But when it came to me having to make a decision and I say mm-hmm. softball, mm-hmm. what would you say to, say, parents that are putting their kids in multiple sports to see what they like and what they don't like? Mm-hmm. Having to come, like, personally asking your son or daughter to make a decision and possibly giving up a something that they love or like, I want to do both, but like say financially, it doesn't work like that right. or time constraints. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. Great question. Right. Cause yeah. I would have loved to just maybe coach you someday in basketball, but I ended right. up coaching you in softball anyway. So, um, and, and, and again, great question. Cause you're nine years old, you're nine <laughs> years old. And we're like, Hey, you have to choose for the rest, <laughs> for the rest of your life. This is going right. to determine, determine some char- character, characteristics Char- about you. Right. No. So, so say, I, yeah. say I played basketball. I would, I would probably have some different characteristics about me than I do. Right. Since I played softball. Yeah. I, I personally think you were better. You were you were better at softball. Like I felt because of your pitching was coming around. We had a great all-star season. Um, you're going to be part of this great organization. Uh, basketball wise, you know, you're good, but it wasn't like you were just like super dominant. Right. I just um, remember fouling everyone and being yeah, confused exactly. on why, like, why does that count as a foul? And I would get frustrated right. with myself. <laughs> Cause you, <laughs> well, it was because I was tall for a 10 year old and I would, I don't know. If we can come back, we can edit this. What? All right. Yeah, you froze. Sorry. Oh. We can we can edit it. Um. 
Yeah, so I, I felt like you were better at softball. And then when we talked to Coach Chris and he said, okay, here's what it looks like. You're not going to have weekends. You're going to have to go to, you know, and we can talk about that with, with Team Mizuno, but, you know, you have to go to EM once a night. We had pitching lessons once a night. So four days a week, you were going to be gone. <laughs> yeah. For long periods of time. So I think we felt that way. We were like, okay, well, we're leaning towards softball because, you're number one, you're, you're good at it. You're on the rise, right? You're one of the better pitchers out there. And then number two, it was a time constraint. There was no way we can do both because <laughs> I knew, I knew travel basketball because I, I was, I've been, you know, travel, I've been a high school coach for years. I know, I know the travel ball, travel basketball circuit. I know how much time it takes. So there was no way we can do both. So we leaned towards softball because of, I thought you were, you were going to be better at it than you were at basketball. So you would say it's important to for parents to kind of recognize their child's ability in a, in a sense. Yeah. The, another great, um, so recognize, um, the, yeah, recognize their ability and be honest with yourself. Right. right? Cause, and I'm, I'm speaking to, to the parents out there, right? Cause you're speaking to the girls that went through this process. I'm speaking to the parents that are going through it, right? Mm -hmm. You have to take a step back and say, okay, is my daughter good enough to play at this level? Uh, cause for years, I mean, how many years of travel softball? 10? Yeah, that 10 I, years that of travel. Yeah. No, that, yeah, we, that we were part of 10 years of travel softball. Oh, I, I think it was 13. No, you were nine and you ended travel in 19. So it's 10 years. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I'm on my 13th. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking travel, right? Travel so, ball. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm talking to those parents out there that were unrealistic about their daughters. And they felt that their daughter should play because of whatever reason, because they were hitting home runs in rec ball. Or, or they were stay. hitting home runs in Austin. Say their parents grew up playing baseball or softball, and they want their kid to be in that realm. Right. Right. So, so they you, like you grew up playing basketball doesn't yeah. doesn't mean that I'm going to be in love with basketball or be potentially good at it. Right, and that's why we gave you choices. Right, that's why yeah. we had you do different things. So this, so at the end of the day, you had a choice of a sport that you wanted to do. Now, you were you were going to play sports. Number right. one. It, we just didn't know where, which one, right? So we ended up playing softball. Um, you were, you were good. Other people were telling us you were good. So that's, you know, so we, we did it, but other parents, they, they don't see that, right? They don't, they don't step away and say, okay, my daughter, the reason why she is not in the lineup is because she's not good. And then you start, you start seeing team hopping, you know, we can get out in that, that, uh, we'll get into that in episode four, but you know, you see team hopping and stuff like that. But you know, at nine years old, you don't know, right? I mean, there's also, I wouldn't say a fine line, but from my perspective too, you got to see that, that, that the child loves the game that they're playing. So not only is their ability but there's like passion towards it. Mm -hmm. And I think at nine years old, I had much, much more passion for softball mm -hmm. than I did basketball. Basketball is just like, oh, let's go play and bounce the ball around and shoot and all this and stuff. Foul. But, <laughs> and foul people out. I mean, I fouled out all the time. I didn't, right. I didn't get it, but you know, basketball is fun. But on the other hand, I had much more love for softball and the pro, the, the process it took to become a good pitcher. Yeah. And I knew I wanted to do that from, from then on. So yeah. for younger athletes, you, you, you said to be like realistic with yourself on your kid's ability for the young athletes, you got to be realistic on what your, what your passion is or what level of love you have for that game. So whether it's basketball, water polo, soccer, blah, 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 it's like, 
you got it, it doesn't it's not only the ability and the the natural athleticism that you have but it's also how like will this my love for the game continue for almost like the rest of your life basically right and we're gonna get into it right because we we've seen multiple girls fall out of love for for various reasons right yeah um so and then we're gonna get into that too how i I you know, I, I still, <laughs> you know, during pitching, I would, you know, I would pout and, and then, you know, give you the silent treatment. And then th- th- we had an aha moment, you know, on the dinner table. We'll talk about that later. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so, yeah, as a parent, we you got to ask your kid, hey, like, is this what you want to do? Like, and if they say yes, then you support it. If they say no, then you move on. But you don't force them to do it. No. And too many parents I see out there. In the travel ball, and, and it's not just softball. I see it in basketball. I see it in, in baseball that their their parents just they force them to because, like you said, I was a college athlete, you know, back in the day, and you're gonna you're gonna play baseball too, just like I did, right? Because you know, boys idolize their dads, and the boys want to follow their, what their dads did when they grew up, right? Um, I didn't have a father, so I didn't, you know, he. So I have no idea. So maybe my perspective on raising a kid is a little bit different from other fathers out there. Um, and that's why we gave you the choice and you chose softball because you loved it. Uh, part of it, I think, is, you know, have the girls, you know, um, being around and cheering and, and, and doing all that kind of stuff. You don't do that in basketball. You just there's five on five and you're up and down the basketball court. And yeah. Foul people, you know, Another- with, with softball, there's. <laughs> You know, another you, aspect of just running back and forth. It, right. it wasn't my thing. It wasn't. Right. My thing. All right. So let's pivot to these practices, right? Yeah. So now these are intense practices. Uh, your weekends are shot. It's a Saturday and Sunday. Um, we get we have to get there early because you're a pitcher. So pitchers and catchers get there a half hour early. Uh, so we're you know you you do your your pitches, and then to kind of describe a a, a Chris. Uh, Chris Garcia practice, if you can, if you remember. Um. Okay. So, I'd say pitchers would get there around like seven thirty. Mm-hmm. Um, and then practice would start at eight. So thirty minutes of pitching for the pitchers. Um, I think you instilled in me the fear of being late. Yep. At that age, so we would arrive at about seven fifteen, and get started right away, and so. Um, that would be the first portion of it. And I'd say practices, practices would run about five hours long Mm -hmm. to be on average five hours, maybe six if we, um, weren't performing the way we should be performing. Right. But I mean, we, we would go hard on defense and then we would end with some offense, um, I mean, at this age, I was definitely trying to play diff- different positions too. I was, I was also hitting at this age, so pitching. Um, I did some third base, yep. some hitting. So just keep it, like keep uh, keeping those skills alive for as long yeah. as I could. Um, yeah, and, then, and then this is travel ball now. So now we're you know, we're, now these practices were closer. When, I think the following year is when we started going out to Orange County and an hour away. But, you know, we started doing pitching lessons with Coach Susie. She was an hour away. You had to do, it's called EM, which is the organization had to work out together. That was an hour away, right? So now we're traveling. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at least four days a week, we're we're having to go somewhere to for softball. Um, yeah, and they were intense. Like, you know, defense, especially early on, because Chris – knew that, you know, we, you're nine, you're not going to be hitting the ball over the fence. Right. Right. So he really focused on defense and being perfect. Yep. Right? And if you were not perfect, there was consequences, which was, which uh, most the of hill. were not used to. Yeah. The hill. There was a hill we had to run up. Which... Well, your, your first, your first was Shady Maple, which is you ran around the, you ran around the, the park. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The hill was at the other, the, the well, and then we got introduced to seven innings. 
seven innings. Which is running. Yeah. So yeah. now you're transitioning from rec ball to this these very intense practices. And if you screwed up, there's consequences, right? Right. And so we, we're getting into these harder practices now. And this is straight out of rec ball. Like these girls are coming from rec ball. So some, some people didn't like it as much, but I, I never experienced the parent side of it. I just saw yeah. like my friends going to other teams and I'm being yeah. like really sad about it. I'm like, why did you leave? Why did you leave? Right. Oh yeah. That, that I, first month that I, there was two or three girls that just, they just quit. So I'm, I'm still friends with one of the, with the original, um, and, you know, I actually saw him uh, at, you know, at dinner the other night. Um, and he just, oh, I hated that team. He just despised that team, right? But but, it, but why? You know, like, yeah. what's the difference between staying on that particular competitive team? Mm -hmm. Especially, like, as a parent, like, deciding, you know what, like, this isn't right or this is blah, blah, blah. Right. So on our, our perspective, it was still kind of a wreck ball mentality. Like they, they viewed, they viewed Chris as like too hard, you know, you know, cause Chris didn't, you know, he didn't, it was, there was no bullshit, right. It was, it was, you know, this is how we're going to do it. If you, if you don't do it, you're, there's consequences. Um, we're here to win, and, you know, and, and, and so, you know, even when we went, went up to Oregon, I don't know if you remember we were going up to Oregon and, that was the year that, was, that Oregon had the huge fires and, you know, the, the, you know, we were playing our rival. I, I forget what the team name was, but um, we played, a, we played a rival team, but we had to keep it short because the small, the, the, the smoke of the fire, the, we were on the verge of winning, but they cut the game short. So, and he was pissed, you know, um, you know, that's when I felt where, you know, parents, it started getting political. Like now it's like, okay, this guy's super intense. And then, you know, so what, and we're going to get into it more with travel, but with coaches, travel ball coaches, a lot of times they just, they, they bring girls on the team because of the parents. Right. right. If, you, if you can get the right parents, then you can, you can make the team however you want. And it ended up being that way because we, we ended up getting the right parents and, 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 and second year tens, but, you know. Because, because parents, they they're with their kid throughout the week. Yeah. So if you're not implementing that sort of discipline that we put in on the, on the weekends and that work on the weekends during the week, yeah. there's, there's no improvement. There's no motivation basically. So you guys are a faucet into wanting that, like to improve and wanting to work and wanting to get to that level. I mean, Chris was talking about us going to college at nine years old. Yeah. Like if you want to be, if you want to be a college athlete, a D1 athlete, this is what you're going to have to do. This is, this is the process you're going to have to take. Right. And I'm not, I'm not going to college for another 10 years. <laughs> you like, know? I'm nine. <laughs> I'm nine. And I'm like, oh, like that's, but then you, then at that age, you start to kind of fantasize about, okay, like I can actually do this. Yeah. Cause you, you're in an organization, quite frankly, that mo most of those girls in the organization end up going to college at high level. You know, pet, you know, these, they're playing these, D one now. They're playing pro level now. Not even D one, but they're winning. They're winning rings, and they're mm -hmm. in the pros, right? So, um, yeah. So we we can transition into that later, um, but yeah, it just it, it got. I think with you, because you're competitive, I think you liked that atmosphere because Chris put demands on you and you're like, okay, if I, if he tells me to do it, I'm going to do it because I'm competitive and, you know, like I'm supposed to do my homework. So I do my homework. Right. Cause we, yeah. we instilled that with you. It's like, you're, you know, we, we, we were just, like you said, we, we disciplined you at home, meaning you got to get these things done. And then when you got to Chris and Chris is like, okay, if you don't feel this, these next three balls, you're going to run a lap. You're like, okay, I'm going to feel these next three balls. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but other girls couldn't handle that. No, <laughs> right? I mean, and, and the parents, right. The parents couldn't handle it either. <laughs> it's, 
I mean, for, for like, I, I try to instill this in my lessons that I teach now, mm -hmm. right? They're like eight, nine, 10. And you don't, you don't want to be with, with Chris, he was harsh and disciplinary and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, he had love for every single one of those girls that was on that team. Mm -hmm. And he treated all of us like he was his own daughter and his daughter was on the team, yes. you know, like, so, and, and you could feel that even, even as I was like a nine or 10 year old, I could feel that through, through his coaching and through his teaching. I mean, for, for the young girls that are playing right now, it's important to recognize that with your coaches. And if, if, if it's one side and they're just disciplinary and like they, they don't, you can't sense that sense of care that's coming from them, mm -hmm. then it, it might be time to look elsewhere because mm -hmm. that's super, super important. And I don't like for the girls that maybe left Chris's team. I, I don't know if it was just like the disciplinary aspect because he, he did care. And he always cared. Yeah. So it's important to have that sort of love within a coaching staff. Yeah. And know that you are cared about, but also having that harsh disciplinary yeah. coaching style, because I wouldn't be as competitive or as disciplinary on myself if it wasn't for those coaches. Right. And Coach Al too, right? You won't yeah. forget about Coach Al because Coach Al... He was, he would get on YouTube, but he'd also love you up and, and, you know, pull you aside and say, Hey, you know, you're doing great. Just, you know, keep your head in the game and stuff. So, um, great stuff, Lace. I, I appreciate you, uh, being open about that, right? Mm -hmm. Cause it's very important to girls that not only are that are entering in, uh, the travel ball circuit. Um, yeah, don't be afraid. If you, if it doesn't feel right, don't be afraid to look elsewhere, right? And, and voice, voice your concerns. Yeah. Because, I mean, my perspective is different from your perspective. Mm -hmm. So you could be seeing, oh, this is great. This is great uh, coaching, like, you know, like practice perfectionism, all this stuff. But I am, like, terrified, you know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely important to voice um, your feelings with your parents. The great point. I was going to say your parents, right? Because some people, if you voice your opinion to the coach, <laughs> it might it fall. Go down. very well. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I, yeah, because you might be, you might be, if you're, un, if you're unhappy with the situation, but the parents see it a different way, but you're there to please your parents, so you stay, you stick with it because you don't want to disappoint your parents or whatever. But and and that's what just what we're saying. And what we're saying is, is have those honest conversations. Yeah, right? it's. And that's going for when you're nine years old and even now when I'm 20 years old, turning 21 soon, like right. you have to have those hard conversations and it's just overall better for your mental and your athletic journey through life. Well, and you're in your relationship with your parents too, right? Yeah. As long as if you're honest with your parents and you have those, that communication, then, you know, you don't have that resentment later. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome stuff, Lace. Uh, I appreciate I love seeing you every week. Um, so I, I, hopefully everyone got some good stuff out of this. Um, we will catch you on the other side of episode four. Um, Lace, I love you. I love you. Got to go give a presentation now. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I don't. I Yeah. <laughs> All right, sweet. I love you. Love you. Bye. Bye.